The Führerbunker was the last headquarters used by Hitler during the Second World War, and it was where he decided to see out the rest of his life in the German war effort as Berlin crumbled around him. He was someone who realised at the end that his Reich was in tatters, and with this he made decisions as to how to end his life, and he would later be allegedly burned inside of the Reich Chancery Gardens by the steps of the bunker's emergency exit. There are many accounts as to what happened that day inside of the Führer bunker, but what isn't as well documented is who was actually inside the underground complex of rooms when Hitler ended his life, and what happened to them in the aftermath of this. Many attempted a breakout to try and avoid capture at the hands of the Soviet Red Army, who they greatly feared, and still many of the stories of the Battle of Berlin are not well documented. But who were the women of the Führer bunker? As always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The first woman to mention is of course probably the most well-known who took up residence inside of the underground bunker, and that is Ava Brown, or Ava Hitler, as she would later be known. She was of course a long-standing girlfriend of Hitler, and as the Nazi state was heading towards failure and collapse, she swore complete loyalty and allegiance to Hitler, and went to Berlin to be with him inside of the Führer bunker. One of a Nazi wife advised Ava to go into hiding at the end of the war, and she replied with, Do you think I would let him die alone? I will stay with him up until the last moment, referring to her boyfriend, and she had planned that she would end her life alongside Hitler. But he, of very course, was very fond of his girlfriend, and in his will, Hitler said she would receive a yearly payment of 12,000 Reichmarks. But what is interesting in this is that when Hitler made his will, that he did not imagine that Ava Brown would die alongside him. It was in early April 1945 that Ava travelled from Munich to go into the bunker, and she then refused to leave. For her loyalty throughout the years, she was rewarded with marriage, and on the night of the 28th of April, she and Hitler married in a small civil ceremony inside the bunker, with an official being fetched to oversee the nuptials, and Joseph Goebbels and Martin Bormann acting as witnesses. A small wedding breakfast then took place, and Ava Brown then took her husband's name, and when she signed her marriage certificate, she actually, to begin with, wrote the letter B for her surname, then crossed this out, and then wrote Ava Hitler instead. But around 1pm on the 30th of April 1945, she bade farewell alongside her new husband to staff inside the bunker. And then around two and a half hours later, a gunshot was heard coming out of Hitler's study. And after waiting a few minutes, Hitler's valet entered the room and he found Hitler dead, having shot himself in the right temple with his pistol. And Ava Brown was sat next to him on the sofa and was slumped over, having consumed cyanide. Magda Goebbels was also inside the bunker when Hitler died, and she was a woman who of course was married to Joseph Goebbels, the Minister of Propaganda. But Magda is often considered the unofficial First Lady of the Third Reich, and she was a woman who was incredibly close with Adolf Hitler. There were some times in private when she questioned the dictator, but overall she was incredibly loyal, and inside of the bunker in April 1945 she moved her family in, living alongside her husband and her children, inside of, specifically, the Vorbunker, the upper chambers of the underground complex below the Reich Chancellery. Magda in the bunker knew she would not make it out alive, and she wrote a letter to her son Harold claiming, The children are wonderful. There never is a word of complaint nor crying. The impacts are shaking the bunker. The elder kids cover the younger ones. Their presence is a blessing. They are making the Fuhrer smile once in a while. May God help that I have the strength to perform the last and hardest. We only have one goal left, loyalty to the Fuhrer, even in death. Harold, my dear son, I want you to give what I learned in life. Be loyal. Loyal to yourself, loyal to the people, and loyal to your country. Be proud of us and keep us in dear memory. Magda and Joseph Goebbels had decided their course of action, and it was harrowing. They were to kill their children, having them injected with morphine to sedate them, then they were to have a cyanide ampule crushed into their mouths, and this is what happened, and she had contemplated killing her children some weeks before. Magda was given several offers to even take the children out of Berlin and keep them hidden, but she refused, saying, I would rather have my children die than live in disgrace, jeered at. My children stand no chance in Germany after the war. 
One account of her actions following Hitler's death claims, Straight after Hitler's death, Mrs Goebbels came down to the bunker with her children. She started preparing to kill them. She could not have done that above ground. There were other people who would have stopped her. That's why she came downstairs, because no one else was allowed in the bunker. She came down on purpose to kill them. Inside of the bunker most knew what was happening, but Hitler's personal doctor, Dr Stumpfegger, had been involved in the killing of the Goebbels' children. But following their deaths, Magda, along with her husband, then walked up to the garden of the Reich Chancellery, arm in arm. It was here where they died, and there are different accounts of their deaths. One of them is they ingested cyanide near to where Hitler had been burned, and they were then given a coup de grace gunshot by an SS officer. Another account is that they used pistols, and that Goebbels may have shot his wife before turning the pistol on himself. But what came next was also harrowing, as the bodies of Magda and Joseph Goebbels were partially burned after petrol became scarce and the remains were left charred, but Magda's remains were not recognisable by her face when compared to her husband's body, which was less well burned. Elsa Kruger was also inside of the Führerbunker, and she was the secretary of Hitler's private secretary, Martin Bormann. Kruger was also alleged to have been Bormann's mistress, but as Berlin was encircled, she joined many others inside the bunker, and she was with other women when Hitler told them to leave the bunker and to head for the Berghof region. But Elsa Kruger said she would stay with Hitler in the bunker, and she witnessed much of the events that played out there, including Eva Brown's admission that she would not leave Hitler. Hitler also gave Kruger and other women a Sinai capsule, just in case they wanted to follow what he and his wife would do. But Elsa Kruger, following Hitler's death, then left the Führer bunker in a group that would attempt to break out, led by SS officer Wilhelm Monker. This group left on the 1st of May 1945 and were captured the following morning, following taking shelter in the cellar of a brewery. At the end of the war, Elsa Kruger was interrogated by the British, and she even married the man who interrogated her. She died in Germany in 2005 at the age of 89. Much of what we know happened inside of the bunker comes from reports from Hitler's private secretary, Traugl Junger, who spoke out after the war about what happened. She began working for Hitler in December 1942, and was the youngest secretary to the dictator, and she claimed about Hitler that, I admit I was fascinated by Adolf Hitler. He was a pleasant boss and a fatherly friend. I deliberately ignored all the warning voices inside me, and enjoyed the time by his side, almost until the bitter end. It wasn't what he said, but the way he said things, and how he did things. But Traudel Junger remained inside of the bunker during the final days of the war, and she stated that regularly the dictator ate his lunch with his secretaries, including Junger, and she knew that he would never leave the bunker. It was Traudel Junger who typed up Hitler's last private and political will and testament inside the bunker the day before he died, and she said that while she was playing with the Goebbels' children, she would hear a gunshot from the secretary, and it was claimed that, suddenly, there is the sound of a shot, so loud, so close, that we all fall silent. It echoes on throughout all the rooms. That was a bullseye, cried Helmut Goebbels, with no idea how right he is. The Führer is dead now. Traudel Junger then left the bunker, as part of the group mentioned previously, on the 1st of May 1945, led by Wilhelm Monker. Junger made it out of Berlin and to the River Elba, but she could not reach the Western Allies, so she went back into the city. She hoped to take a train after a few days, and she lived under an alias when she was arrested by Soviet forces and was interrogated. She was interrogated about her role inside of the bunker, and what happened in the final days of Hitler's life, but was then released from prison, and lived for a long while after. Gerda Christian was another of Hitler's personal secretaries, and she began working for him in 1937, after his other secretaries complained about the amount of work they had to do. But she later married a Luftwaffe officer, and after a short break, returned to work for Hitler following marriage. Her husband became a general major, and the chief of the Luftwaffe command staff, and he was based inside the bunker in Berlin, and he left the complex on the 22nd of April 1945, but Gerda Christian, his wife, remained with Hitler, and she helped to look after the Goebbels' children. Gerda also ate lunch with Hitler regularly in the bunker, and she asked Hitler herself if he thought about leaving, in which the dictator replied that he would not, and he told her that his body must not fall into Soviet hands, 
and would need to be cremated without a trace being left. She also received the cyanide ampule from Hitler, and she was also one of those who bid Hitler farewell shortly before his death. But Gerda Christian entered the study, and she noticed that there was a small blood stain around the size of a hand on the rug next to the sofa, but she was also part of the breakout group, but was taken prisoner by the Soviets. At the end of the war, she divorced her husband, for the reason that he did not remain in the bunker with her, and she died in 1997, aged 83. One woman who is less well known about is Erna Flegel, a nurse who worked inside of an emergency casualty station at the Reich Chancellery. She was working nearby to the bunker, and she worked to help wounded people in the area, and was described as a stolid woman who did not flinch as she dressed the hideous injuries of the wounded. When she was in the bunker, she was friends with Magda Goebbels, and did not get on with Ava Brown, and she helped to look after the Goebbels' children, and she claimed she could not forgive Magda for their murder. Hitler thanked Flegel for her service in helping the wounded, and she was said to have been hysterical when she said goodbye to the Führer. She then returned to work at the casualty station after this, and she became one of the final occupants of the Führer bunker. She was also with a fellow nurse named Lieselot Czavinska, who also remained in the bunker, and on the 2nd of May 1945, they were sent to a Soviet secret police headquarters in Berlin. Flegel was released, and she claimed that she was actually treated well by the Soviets. She then, after the war, gave interviews about what happened, but in 2006 died at the age of 94. Constance Manziali was a cook and dietitian who served Hitler until his final days, and she began working at the Berghof a few years before the end of the war, and she accompanied Hitler inside Berlin, and two of the rooms inside the Vorbunker were used for the food supply, and there was another room for the kitchens, where Manziali worked. She used the kitchens to prepare Hitler's meals, and she was requested by Hitler to leave the bunker on the 22nd of April, but she promised to stay with him, and she also received a cyanide capsule. But it was part of Monka's breakout group that led to Constance Manziali finally leaving, and she managed to get to a cellar of a brewery. She was tasked with trying to deliver a letter to Karl Dernitz, the successor, along with four other women, including Gerda Christian, Elsa Kruger and Traudel Junger, but as the women walked out of the brewery courtyard, they split up. Manziali was stated to have been the ideal image of Russian femininity, well built and plump-cheeked, and she was wearing a Wehrmacht jacket. She was last seen being taken towards a U-Bahn subway tunnel by two Soviet soldiers, as Manziali told Junger that, they want to see my papers, but this is where she disappeared and was never heard from again. Johanna Ruff was considered to have been the last surviving person to have been an inhabitant of the bunker, and she worked as an assistant in the complex. She was just 15 years old, and it was said she was one of the last people to see the Goebbels' children alive. She worked as a nurse treating soldiers apparently, but she was then, during the Battle of Berlin, forced to make a breakout, and she was detained by the Soviets for two months, but was then released for the fact she was very young. One woman to also comment on who was inside the Führer bunker in April 1945 but was not there in the final moments of Hitler's life was Hannah Reich. She was of course a celebrated female German aviator and she tested many of the new aircraft developed by the Nazis. Reich flew out of Gatov airport to meet Hitler in Berlin on the 26th of April 1945 and the Red Army were already in central Berlin. Reich was given a Sinai capsule but she flew out of Berlin in an Arado AR-96 on the 29th of April, and this was the last aircraft out of the city. Hannah Reich would then be captured, and she said about when she was ordered to leave the Führer bunker that, it was the blackest day, when we could not die at our Führer's side. Reich also said, we should all kneel down in reverence and prayer before the altar of the fatherland. She was held in prison for 18 months, but it's important to consider that she flew out the day before Hitler died. These were the last women of the Führer bunker who were witnesses to the death of Hitler and the chaos that emerged after. Many were ordered to leave the bunker in order to save their lives and themselves and attempt breakouts, but their information at the end of the Second World War has become pivotal to understanding what truly happened in the underground complex in the dying days of the Nazi Reich. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, Thank you so much for watching.